On this week's episode of the Ritual Misery Podcast, I am finally back on the show, back from New York, and Amos has been watching dog videos? Uh, yeah, because Adobe maxed me out this week. <laughs> well, uh, is Adobe maxing out on uh, gunfighting in the galaxy? Um, maybe, but maybe it's also just watching idiots uh, uh, at Six Flags. And we have Squid this week. No. That was very anticlimactic. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 190 for Thursday, the 18th of October, 2018. This is a show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos, that's Kent, drinking from the official Lyft-sponsored beer koozie. And this week we do have, as Kent just kind of mentioned before, Squid. How are you doing this week? <laughs> uh, better now that your guys are around, finally. Uh, are you saying that you didn't like doing the show by yourself? Oh my god, that was frightening. <laughs> it was a lot of fun to watch, though. <laughs> um, all I can say about it is I am so far behind on publishing everything. So if you are watching this live and you haven't heard the Squid episode or my episode from last week, um, I'm sorry? <laughs> you can go over to twitch.tv slash ritual misery, click on videos... And yeah. they're both currently available. Yeah, for a limited time. Literally. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, uh, can't, you went to New York this week. Uh, you're, you're wearing an I Love New York shirt because why not? Because that's what you do that's, when you go to New York. That's, that's so, like, that is, that's so awful even for you, dude. Like, <laughs> dude, I mean, actually we, okay, like, so we went to New York. I, I've never been to New York before. Steph's never been to New York before. And we wanted to do everything that we could do in New York in a week, and we did our best. It, that included checking the boxes on all the stereotypical things, like buying an I Love New York t-shirt. Um, dude, I mean, I ate New York pizza. I ate hot dogs from a street vendor. I uh, We went to a Broadway play. Uh, walked through Central Park. We yelled at taxi drivers. Um, we uh, hung out in Harlem with Curtis LaRock, mm. which was definitely Ooh. one of the highlights of the trip. Uh, we did, dude, we did as much in a week, I think, as you can cram into, uh, a, a, a week in New York, uh, particularly in Manhattan. We really didn't branch out <laughs> far from Manhattan. But I mean, uh, did you, did you pass out drunk in uh, Central Park, wake up naked next to a strange man with a cat sitting on your face? Hey, hey, um, hey, don't tell my everybody one... my story. <laughs> <laughs> that is one box I did not check. I mean, come on, dude. That's that's simple, right? But, you know, I, I tell you what, though. Manhattan is a crazy-ass place, and I saw a lot of crazy people doing crazy shit. But one, one, uh, one instance of craziness that happened while I was there, I did not get the opportunity to witness. And I was wondering if you could click in the show notes the box that I'm highlighting right now, if you can show our audience this little, the short little six second video clip of something that occurred in Manhattan. Apparently, this was the night before we left. A guy, this was probably, I don't know, 10 blocks away from where we were staying. This guy decided that he wanted to fight a police car. Let's see this. <laughs> that's uh that's 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 impressive he's butt naked punching the window of a police car in the street yeah uh, apparently the, the the cops you know the, responded to the many 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 callers <laughs> and uh went and got him and took him directly to a psychiatric hospital my kung fu more better than your kung fu. Show sure <laughs> Yeah, yeah. For for what it's worth, he was whipping that car's ass. Uh, like the he car really wasn't did. wasn't even responding. It was like it, it was too shocked to to punch him back. That's yeah. And what's what's super impressive to me is it's getting cold in New York now. It's yeah. probably 
when that video was shot, it was probably about 40 degrees and the man is completely naked, junk swinging around mm. like <laughs> no fucks given by that guy. Yeah. Um, I, <laughs> and being wants to know if you got kicked out of a bar while you were in New York. <laughs> uh, no, I didn't actually. I, I think what it was, I didn't spend a whole lot of time in any particular bar. We went to quite a few bars. And so, you, so you didn't try to work your way back into a bar you were previously in, only be told that you were too drunk to go in to try to fight the bouncer at the door because you just yep. left. Yeah, I mean, not that that's ever happened to me in any other city, but uh, uh, oh, no, never. <laughs> um, so, in fact, well. one of the one of the points that we made was that we would never eat at the same restaurant more than once, and we would not drink at the same bar more than once. That's so, good policy. Yeah. Now, how long were you there? Was it like seven days or whatever? Yeah, it was Tuesday to Tuesday. That's cool. That's not bad yeah. at all. Um, while you were uh, away at New York, I was planning a trip of my own. So Thursday, I'm flying to DFW. I'm going to have uh, lunch with uh, Dark Redeemer and then cruise on down to San Antonio, spend the night with the wife because she's doing a symposium in uh, a, 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 in San Antonio. She's doing <laughs> some sort of a fancy word in San Antonio. San Antonio. Yes, oh. exactly. That's that's what I got out of that. I have no idea what it's about. I'm not there for that. Could you use that in a sentence? <laughs> My wife is going to a symposium in San Antonio. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then well, Friday, we are driving up to Abilene, old stomping grounds, to visit some friends, uh, some friends that you've actually met, Kent, uh, AJ and Matt, and their associated wives. Um, is this the guy that has the washing machine that talks to him? Yes. Okay. Yes, that, would, that would be Matt. Um, Why did you not lead off with, we're going to see my friend who talks to washing machines? <laughs> no, 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 no. It, it talks to him. It's... <laughs> Yeah, there's a difference, Sean. Yeah, Come if, on. if he was talking to washing machines, I would have led off with that. That's <laughs> <laughs> so the um, washing machines have an existential crisis. Uh, by way of an app on his phone, yes. Uh, and then uh, Saturday morning, we are driving up to a little town outside of Abilene to pick up our puppy and then drive back to DFW and fly back here to uh, to Alaska. Um, we are actually picking up Sam's, Sam is my dog that died a, a couple of years ago. We're picking up his nephew. Um, it's a done deal. The arrangements have been made and it is, it's going to be very, very interesting. So yes, I've been watching a lot of dog videos and I know I mentioned that last week, but I, uh, that's all I've done all week is watch dog videos on how to train dogs and not raise a shitty dog. <laughs> yeah, because you do not want shitty dogs. No, I I don't have the patience for a shitty dog. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so many people have just all the patience in the world for shitty dogs. I mean, obviously, because because they have how many people dogs. have shitty yeah, dogs. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and I am fully under the under the, uh, the 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 thought process that it's not the shitty dog that makes the shitty dog; it's the shitty owner that makes the shitty dog. Uh, or the shitty family that makes a shitty dog. So, um, yeah, I, I don't, I don't want to be a shitty owner or a shitty family. Uh, so I, I, I don't want a shitty dog. So it's, yeah. Well, if you accidentally get a shitty dog, can the shitty dog turn the family into a shitty family? Um, I think, Hmm, that's a good quandary. I know, I know a good family can turn a shitty dog into a good dog. Oh, that's, all right. Well, that's good. That, that's, that's good. I mean, that's, that's just, that's just fact. Okay, I, I lost count at 25 shitty dogs. <laughs> <laughs> that's too many shitty dogs to have. That's, that's, this is just, especially there's a lot of shitty dogs happening right now. <laughs> and, and one is too many, so. <laughs> now, I'm just it's really disappointed that you didn't get a Alaskan Husky being in Alaska. Isn't it like just like law that you have to have a Husky up there? Uh, No. No, uh, it's either a husky or a timber wolf. Uh, well, uh, for for us, it was either it was either one of Sam's kin, like it is in this case, or something way smaller than a husky or a German shepherd. So, dude, if it snows any depth, that dog's gonna get lost. Uh, the German shepherd. <laughs> yeah. N well, yeah, no, I mean, he's, German he's like an puppy. albino, right? No, this one's actually more of a silver. A silver German Shepherd versus the blonde that Sam was. Ah. Okay. Yeah, we couldn't get the same color dog. That'd just be weird. 
It'd be, yeah. it'd be Sam too. Basically a clone. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> No, um, and Sam was was a hundred over a hundred pounds when he died, and he was eighteen months old. Uh, he didn't. He was not a short dog. Mm. Uh, Sam Sam was a was a, a large, tall animal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, we have we have an extra large kennel, and he was already filling that kennel up with his his girth, like he could barely move around in it. So, Kent knows Kent met him. Uh, <laughs> big dog. Yeah, true fact. <laughs> So yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. Like that's all I've been doing. Um, now, hopefully, none of us are part of this crowd. But Sean, you've been watching uh, <laughs> says watching idiots lay in a coffin at Six Flags. Like, please tell me there's more to this than just idiots at Six Flags because that's kind of a non-starter for me. Yeah, it, it, it's always about idiots at Six Flags. But uh, this is true. Last exactly. week there was this big promotion that they did all over most of the Six Flags around the country to sleep in a coffin overnight at Six Flags. And in which case, you could go there, you could fuck with the people all day. When it became night, you could shine lights in their eyes, and they were just stuck laying there. And I decided, okay, let's go check this out, because I'm not going to lay in a coffin. Yeah, I'm, nah, this is getting too close for that to happen. <laughs> <laughs> So, so wait, so I, hold on. Wait, wait. What's the point? Like, why do people sign up for this? If if people are just gonna fuck with them, I mean, you're not gonna actually sleep in it. Yes. No, they were actually going to sleep on them. But but with people is. fucking with them and like shining lights and grabbing at them and <laughs> I mean, was, I don't know. Yeah, I I think we're missing a central focus here, as in. <laughs> What's the benefit for the people that are supposedly sleeping in these coffins and getting shit, get, getting fucked with? Like, uh, are they getting three hundred dollars, a free season oh. pass, not like one of their memberships, just a season pass, one express band for one day during their fright fest, and a coffin. You get to keep the coffin. You get to keep the coffin. Oh, it's California. That's a done deal. They oh. had people lined up at the door for this shit. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> the, no, and that's the thing. The one here in California, only a couple people actually stuck around for the full 30. The one in um, St. Louis, like, they stayed there for the full 30. In fact, they skipped uh, breaks. Mm. So, what, what, 30, what, 30 hours? Yeah. Or Wow. 30, 30, like, 30 hours in a coffin. Like that they is, jumped on Friday, they jumped into the coffin at noon, went all the way until 6 p.m. the next day. Meanwhile, they would occasionally have to, the only time they they would get out is like six minutes an hour to go poop. Yes, yes, being more poop. <laughs> <laughs> and then from there, They'd have to like occasionally have to do like a scare zone or a haunted house by themselves where they fully packed it out, like really when Adam scared them. And then they would have like all the characters still dressed up all night, staying there, like banging on their coffins in the middle of the night and constantly screwing with them. And of course, uh, up until closing, you could stay there with them. And like I said, people were sitting there with flashlights shining them in their eyes and yelling stuff and banging on the coffins. And okay, so <laughs> as a matter of principle, this is something I could do because you tell me, okay, go do this. You get six minutes an hour to shove your face full of food or empty your ass. I'm down. Like, and I get to keep a coffin, get three hundred bucks, a season pass, and a fast pass band, whatever it is for. Mm-hmm. For for a day during during Fright Fest, I'm down. I could do that. Like that, I wouldn't mm-hmm. sign up for it, but if I had to, no problem. Like I'm I'm not afraid of that. <laughs> Here's where it stops for me. <laughs> as soon as that casket is closed and begins moving, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> like if you close the casket, I'm still good. I'm just sitting there chilling out. Okay, as long as it's not locked and I have a way out, I'm I'm good. As soon as that casket is closed and it feels like someone's lifting it up, I'm done. <laughs> I, 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 I have visions of Louis being buried upside down in the walls in, the, in a casket, and I'm done. Like, as soon as that coffin moves, I'm, I'm out. I'm out. Wait, wait, what's the story about Louis? Interview, uh, with, the interview with the vampire. 
Oh, that's right. That's yeah. right. Louis, Louis got thrown in, locked in a coffin. The coffin turned upside down and then buried behind a brick wall. Uh, to, to, to sit there for eternity, upside down, uncomfortable, and hungry. No, thank yeah, you. Yeah, but Ar- Ar- Armando come get you the next night. It's fine. Right. As everyone I love burns in the sunlight. No, thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right. I mean, that's one small detail. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's really the technicalities that get you on that point. Um, okay. So, uh, can would you do this? Is this something you would do? And where's the line? Where, where's the line either time-wise or, or construct-wise that you would draw the line if you would be able to do this? No, I, I would totally do this. Like the the time constraint itself, like thirty hours is a large chunk of time, so it would have to be like pl- planned accordingly. Like mm. it wouldn't, it couldn't be during work. It couldn't be right. during like you know any planned family function. Outside of that, like just my time is my own time. <laughs> I'll lay in a fucking coffin for thirty hours. It's like ten, that's that's my kind of gig. Like not have to do anything. Ten that's bucks an awesome. hour to ignore people. <laughs> yes. It's not a bad. Deal. Let's do it. All right. So, so where would you draw the line? Where, where would you say, okay, enough. I'm done. I'm out. I mean, don't like set me on fire or like fill the coffin with fire ants or something. Right. No, no, no. Oh, no. oh I forgot about that part. <laughs> oh, geez. Okay. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> they actually took, they had a box with a uh, tranchula. And they showed it to everybody that's in the coffin. You're sitting in the coffin. And they set it right in front of you. They sat it there for like a while. Then they opened it up and put it into the coffin. But when they first took the spider out, they put in a fake one. But didn't tell Mm. anybody. They're just like, you couldn't see them slip in the fake spider. You just felt them move around and felt something fuzzy. And then it would stay there. And then you'd have to sit there for like 20 minutes with the spider there and try not to freak out. I'm I'm gonna go ahead and call it. That's where Kent bails. <laughs> no, I I'm actually okay with that because if it's if this is an organized function and someone is putting a tarantula on me, even if it was the real deal tarantula, yeah, like I'm I know that I'm not going to be like permanently injured by this thing if it does bite, and chances are it's not going to bite anyway. Tarantulas don't typically bite people unprovoked. Um. It'll, it'll, it'll I, I be think I can handle that. Pulling up your pant leg, though. Well, that's yeah, that's something else. <laughs> like if it's crawling into my clothes, yeah, I might be done there. <laughs> All right, Sean, nice. how about you, man? Where where where, do, where would you draw the line? I I five I minutes no in sitting there for thirty hours. Mm-hmm. That's cool. The minute you create a wooden casket out of it, no, done. No, I am way <laughs> way. No, nah, I've been too close to living in that casket before. No, I'm not. No, not handling the casket. And then to find out that I'm cool with the people messing with me, that's cool. But when minute that they would have put that spider right in front of me, that's it. I'm out. I'm running. See ya. <laughs> Goodbye. In fact, uh, one of the guys, I forget where it was. One of the guys, like, as soon as they gave him a break, like the first break, he jumped, ran, grabbed a bunch of shirts and booked it out of the park. Damn. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, and that well, would suck if you're like at 29 and a half hours in, and then that's when you hit your breaking point. Mm. Yeah. Um, a lone gunfighter in the outer reaches of the galaxy. Kent, are you, are, are, are you having, is this one of those dreams that you go through every once in a while where you're like the, the, the illusions of, uh, of, of, of awesomeness? Grandeur? No, no, not like grandeur. <laughs> Even you can't imagine that. Dude, like being a lone gunfighter in in the far reaches of the galaxy has been my dream since I was old enough to to know what a gunfighter and a galaxy was. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, this is like my Star Wars wet dream. And that just happens to be the base the basic show synopsis of the new Star Wars TV show that is coming out, I believe sometimes sometime next year began filming it's called the mandalorian and yeah that's what it's about it's a lone gunfighter in the outer reaches of the galaxy so basically what i picture in my head is is the good the bad and the ugly set in the star wars universe where the main protagonist where the man with no name is wearing mandalorian armor and it's it's uh run the show is run by john favreau who no you probably know from- no oh you don't like john favreau 
He no, I was so I was director. so everything was so perfect. I was like waiting for and it's and the showrunner's gonna be Josh Whedon. And I was just gonna lose it and go, okay, I'm down, I'm in on it. Yes, I've got to see this. Well, well, okay, so one of the directors that's been announced for this is Taika Waititi, who directed uh Thor Ragnarok. Mm. And I am super stoked for this show. I cannot wait. There's a it's actually I put a link in the show notes for the official Star Wars.com page where they reveal a a photo from mm-hmm. the set. And it just it gets me more and more excited. When I was like four years old and I saw Boba Fett for the first time, I fell in love with that character, mostly because of the armor, because let's be honest, the character doesn't actually do much of shit. So in, you're saying in, you had a Mandalorian chub. Yeah. Like it's anyway, I'm just, I'm so excited for this show. It's got so much potential. They're, they're putting a lot of talent behind it, uh, dumping a lot of money into it. They're putting off, uh, making some of the, the newer films like episode nine is still on schedule, but all other films have been postponed. This is like the next live action thing that we're going to get to see. Mm-hmm. I'm super duper stoked for it. So what do you think about all the other stuff being, being shelled for now, like being p- postponed, delayed, whatever with good Bob, idea with Bob. I coming out and saying, well, the reason we're doing this so quickly is because of me. I'd made the decision. Yeah. Um, I, cause a know, lot of I, people, a lot of people are giving uh, Oh, what's her name? I just, it just left my mind. Ray. Uh, no, the, the head like, honcho of oh. Lucasfilm. Yeah, Kennedy. Kathleen Kennedy. Yeah, a lot of people are giving uh, Kathleen Kennedy a lot of grief over the pacing and the release schedule, and there, there was just too fast, too much, too soon, not yeah. not spending the time on it and everything else. And for Bob Iger to come out and say no, that that was all me. I was the one pushing that. I was the one. I was the 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 lone consultant on that as the CEO of of Disney. Um, does that change your perspective on things a little bit, or or were you always a Kathleen Kennedy purist, or what? No, I mean, I, I, I'm not a loyalist to any particular, you know, figurehead. I, I think Kennedy has done a good job uh, being the overall producer of Lucasfilm. Uh, the pacing was a bit aggressive for mm-hmm. the release schedule. I didn't mind it because, you know what, give me more Star Wars. Oh, you gave me five movies last month? Okay, give me more Star Wars. Like, my <laughs> appetite is so huge for Star Wars. However... Uh, from from a pop culture standpoint, from a um, uh, fan fatigue standpoint, yeah, their release schedule was was aggressive, especially releasing solo what five months after episode eight. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's yeah. that's too much, too quick. Uh, so I I think slowing down the pace, maybe coming out with a new movie every couple of years, maybe maybe go back to the the old school schedule of once every 3 years but have a live action tv show going and in a cartoon going at the same yeah. time that's here's, you know that's good amount of content here's where, still. here's where i'm at i i love what kathleen kennedy is trying to do she was always the savior of what lucas was screwing up she she was like the one voice there that kind of put him at bay a little bit so as long as it's not Lucas screwing up his own perfection, I'm okay with that. I really am. Yes, this the schedule was too much for our our feature length movies, but Rogue One would have been an awesome TV series. Solo could have been an awesome TV series. Uh, do like they did with Mandalorian. They they were going to Mandalorian. We filmed. They said, "No, film. Let's make it a series. Let's make it an eight-part series, so we can tell a full-length, fully in-depth storyline." And mm. I know I shit on John Favreau just now. I don't mean to. I love him. I mean, I got a Swingers poster sitting right up there. So my love for Favreau is is deep, way deep. I mean, I still sh- sit there and shout Rudy, and I still <laughs> I mean, trust me, I love Favreau. <laughs> And he's going to do great on this. It's just, I want to see more of this in-depth storytelling. We're we're a we're we're a binge culture culture now. So mm. make it make them longer, spread them out more. Let us mm. like binge on this one piece and 
kind of chew on it. Let that steak sit, uh, savior in my mouth. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I'm of the mindset that, especially with like Mandalorian, the, the, uh, the concept of taking some of this stuff, I'm, I think I'm in the Scott Johnson camp. Like I want to know stories that have nothing to do with anything we've ever seen ever so far. Like mm-hmm. I don't even want to use the role playing books as like, like guides, like take me somewhere way out there, the other side of the galaxy on some planet. No one's ever even conceived of yet. And show me some random stuff. Show me, show me some, some flies with Jedi powers. You know, I mean, show, <laughs> show me something that is just completely left field. This still ties in the overall scheme of star Wars. And if you want to slow the pace down to make that happen, if you want to, change how you're presenting the material, not just, you know, to take more time to produce quality material, but to, to put an artificial starvation period in there to, you know, make us, make us thirst for it a little bit more. I'm Mm -hmm. all for it. Like everything that I've heard about what Kathleen Kennedy, Bob Iger and Disney in general is doing with Lucasfilm right now. It sounds like they're really, you know, they're like, Hey, you know what? This Marvel thing, this Marvel thing really worked. Let's stop trying to invent the, reinvent the wheel and let's do what we do with Marvel, but at, at Star Wars own pace. Exactly. And I think that's going to be amazing. Uh, and it's, it's not just that you also got to put the right people in charge and let them take their choices and let them stay with it. Yeah. I mean, some of the, some of the bad stuff that you hear about solo is because they didn't allow the original directors and writers to keep going in that path. Let it go down the path. Have faith in those guys. They're, they're well, we, bigger we fans don't, than we are. We don't know the status of solo pre Ron Howard. We, well, so w- the one thing that we do know is that the, uh, Lawrence Kasdan who wrote the film, uh, was pissed off that the directors were going way off script and yeah. because they were supposed to make the movie that he wrote and they were writing like something loosely based on the script that he wrote. And uh, Kasdan holds a lot of weight in Lucasfilm. And uh, that's, I mean, there's, I'm sure there's a lot more to that story, uh, but that was like one of the main pushes for it. Yeah. Did did they do yeah. any more primary shooting or, or secondary shooting after Ron Howard took took the home? Oh yeah. yeah. Ron Howard like reshot like half to three quarters of that movie. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh man, I bet the budget was just demolished on that one. Yeah, and that was that was a, a big problem. That's one of the reasons that the movie was so expensive to make. Yeah. And I think the reason that it didn't make nearly as much money as they were expecting it to make is because they released it so quickly after episode eight, oh, there yeah, was the yeah. star Wars fatigue factor. Plus the, like the big backlash or well, the exaggerated backlash that came from the so-called star Wars fans, um, et cetera. It's, I mean, we can yeah. debate that and we're not going to well, do that here right now, but I think but that, the backlash from episode eight caused a lot of the, uh, consternation or I guess reservations about people going to see solo. When you're sitting in a star Wars movie and one of the trailers of that star Wars movie is another Star Wars movie. Star Wars movie. <laughs> yeah. Right. Somebody screwed something up. Yep. Yep. You know, and especially when you, they had the release date before they brought Ron Howard on. The least they could have done is brought Ron Howard on and say, Hey, we are changing the release date, pushing it out. They have all of the rest of this year. And then most of the beginning of next year to really have, still have a safety zone before nine comes out uh, at the end of next year. They they need to just make Mar- make make it Marvel May and Star Wars December and just stick with that because mm. that formula really really works. Yep. You yep. still kind of get that. fed on both directions and you don't have to worry about crunching because you're talking about one of the biggest movie release years. I mean, you had Ready Player One, you had uh, Quiet Place, you had. Um, the Avengers, you had well, Solo, you now, had so many big movies. How how um, much of this this compressed schedule they had Star Wars in, and, and particularly Solo, was based on the fact that Disney is also the major player in so many movies late summer and going into this winter. You know, I mean, how much? How I, I, I'm not saying there was, but how much of that might have affected it? Like there 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 could be Disney level sh- stuff at work 
Well, yeah, because you start when you're releasing so many movies, you're you run into the problem of competing with yourself. Exactly. So you're undercutting your profits by competing with yourself. Basically. Especially when you're when you're targeting the same market, like Marvel and Star Wars. There's a, a very big cross section in that Venn diagram. Oh yeah, I mean it's basically just a circle. Yeah. And then I mean, you add in um, any of the Pixar's or any of the Disney fandoms that also cross over right into that as yeah. well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. So, all right, um, man, if if uh, if you were looking on this show for some geekery and you <laughs> haven't found it yet, then there's something very wrong with you because that just happened. Uh, but <laughs> it's time to move on to some uh, some some more geekery. Actually, L.A. Comic Con is coming. <laughs> Uh, Sean, are you actually attending this year or are you just going to be one of the, one of the, the resident non attendees? Oh no, I got my three day weekend pass and I'm probably going to shoot down after work, um, from a uh, thousand Oaks going to shoot down to downtown LA, pick up the pass on Thursday. So I don't have to worry about doing that on Friday, mm. but, uh, this year it's going to be really, really interesting because this is first year without Stan Lee's presence. And I mm. I just I almost didn't buy tickets this time, only because that would have hurt too much. I mean, whenever you go, you feel Stan Lee's presence there throughout the entire place. You can run into him, and he stops and he says hi. Everybody around there's like it is one of the most positive cons I've ever been to. Like there is no crowdedness there. Everybody takes care of each other. Everybody makes sure everybody's got room. Everybody helps each other out. It's not about, Hey, get out of my way. I'm standing in line here. Let me crowd up this line for the panel. It's like, no, they even have panels right there on the floor. So you don't even have to worry about standing in line. But this year without Stanley's presence, you're now seeing like a huge VIP section. Like they're walling off half of the stage area just for VIPs. Mm. Which, what is the what is the reason for his non attendance? Is it just uh, poor health, or I, I think it's poor health. It's also uh, the crap going on with his daughter, the stealing mm. of his blood to make comics, uh, the, uh, to put it in yeah. Ghost Rider comics to be exact. Uh, the mess up with uh, his financials. I mean, losing what thirty million dollars. Yeah, but I, I think well, see, I was under the impression that he was he was putting his, his basically putting his empire back together. Like he was in he was well down the path of of getting everything back. He got back his social media accounts, um, uh, getting you know control of his money back and all of that sort of stuff. I thought he was kind of uh, not necessarily whole again, but but well on his way. He's almost there. You can you can tell like. Um... He's starting to produce more stuff. He's starting to do more articles and lend more people back in. But you can mm. tell, I mean, this last article that he did with his daughter and her, his daughter's lawyer, you can see the man's just broken. He's hurt. And sure. it, it hurts a lot of us that actually run in. I mean, it's hard not to run into him in LA unless he's not leaving his house. I mean, there mm. are one of the best things to do is go on Stan Lee sightings mm. and to see, to see one of his projects just kind of fizzle and just go, okay, it's going to be its own thing. Now, no more Stan Lee involvement kind of really hurt. So it took me a while mm. to actually go this year. Mm. So are you cosplaying? Hell no! <laughs> I uh, thought about you could go as, Maybe really... you could go. Maybe you could be a Stanley stand-in, like a uh, like cosplay. Is <laughs> he's going to go as a stand. fan? He's going to dress yeah, up as a fan. Mess. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Excelsior. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, from uh, from from conventions about to happen to conventions that just recently happened. Adobe Max was earlier this week. I think it maybe may still be going on. I'm not sure. Uh, the big stuff happened all earlier this week. Um, new updates to Audition and Lightroom, of course, are the big things that I'm interested in for photography and for audio. Uh, neither one of them had major updates, but they were both. It, you're not going to go buy Lightroom or Audition or subscribe rather if you weren't already. But if you already have it, like I, I was really excited about the small changes that they're adding, the features that they're adding. It was pretty cool. And it was interesting because this year their presentation, their whole flow of it 
seemed more Apple like, you know, without the Johnny uh, Ive. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. I mean, that's a whole presentation in itself. Yeah. Um, did you guys catch any of this? Did any of this hit any of your circles at all? No, like not at all. I had no idea Adobe was putting on a, a like a keynote or whatever you want to call it, a release party an, thing. An, an annual convention? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's call it that. I, I knew it was about time they were going to start shaking things up because uh, there's word that like like they bought out some big IPs and started incorporating it, but I didn't know they were actually trying to pretend to be Apple because we all know fuck Apple. <laughs> of course. Uh, there's the obligatory Sean fuck Apple. So Amos, besides making the software bigger, faster, stronger, sleeker, et cetera, I mean, what what is the big draw? Like what? You said they're adding some features. Do you have an example of of something that you're looking forward to seeing? Um, for me personally, it's really the small stuff. Uh, they they added a lot of uh, oh, the easiest way to explain it would be filters in Lightroom. Although that's okay. not what they are. They're they're more presets and, and uh, additional things that you can tweak about a picture. Um, and in audition, it, there's more content to wear. Like it, uh, it can recognize costs. Uh, plosives, things like that a little bit better. Hmm. You know, just the stuff that, you know, that I do on the side, the editing podcast on the side that will make that a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. The one mm -hmm. thing that I really saw, that, so they came out with a, basically a, a an iMovie um, uh, uh, equivalent for the iPad and the iPhone. So you can now edit. It's like basically Premiere Pro, except it's a mobile version. Mm, um, they needed that. They really needed that. They announced... Um, and they said everything was coming forth in the 2019, which today Apple announced their next event. So I don't think that was a coincidence. They announced a full version of Photoshop on the iPad Pro. Full mm. version, not not scaled down, not separate files. It taps directly into your uh, Adobe Cloud, and you can import the the same files that you would use on the desktop. You have the same controls, the same brushes, all this stuff. It's Photoshop on the iPad as opposed to a Photoshop port for the iPad, which is what we have now. And that's coming next year. That was really the, the big thing that they were talking about. Although I'm not much of a, a Photoshop power user. So that's why that wasn't my big thing, but uh, mm -hmm. still it's, it's interesting to see them finally, because Photoshop is an amazing program if you're a graphic designer or whatever else, but it's very, very heavy. It's very intensive, uh, power intensive for them to be able to port it in a full way onto the iPad. We'll see how it goes, but that if if it stands up to any of its promise, that is very significant. Well, you got to remember, Premiere was always uh, not Premiere. Adobe was the Apple go to for the longest time. In fact, before the iMac, right. the yeah. only way you could use Premiere was to use it on Macs. And the only reason they started coming up with like um, Final Cut Pro and iMovie and all that stuff is because Premiere was so heavy and it would kill. I mean. I killed so many Macs just using Premiere alone, not anything else, because it's so resource heavy. Mm -hmm. But it is the most stable. It was always the most stable, the most uh, user friendly, the the best program to use when you're sitting there forty hours deep into a project, and yep. you didn't have to worry about losing everything on Premiere. Yep. But when you went to Final Cut Pro, you would lose crap on that in that second and have to start over from the absolute scratch. Yeah. So I'm actually happy to hear all this again. I was really hoping to hear that they would actually like launch more into outside tablets, not just, you know, go, okay, we got to make our Apple people what? happy. Let's, uh, let's stretch our wings even more. Well, Do th that's, what that's premier really was good at. They're, 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 they, they touted their partnership with Apple, uh, as they were talking about the iPad pro Apple is doing an event that they're expected, fully expected to announce new iPad pros, uh, on the 30th of October. And like Samsung announced today, a tablet that is, I mean, it's got four gigs of Ram, a 128 gigabyte hard drive, USB ports. Like, so on the windows side, the manufacturers are coming out with tablets that are capable of running the windows version of the Adobe software we already have. Mm -hmm. Whereas iOS is so pervasive and so different from Mac OS 
that for them to announce it like that is it makes it more of a thing. And with only Apple in charge of, of what goes into the systems, and I think a lot of it is the the Apple chips are now fast enough to, to make up for it for the production. And, you know, because I couldn't imagine using Premiere to export uh, or, or even Photoshop to export a fully rendered file of any size on my iPad 2. Like, there's just oh, no God, way. no, uh, <laughs> no. You know, um, but my iPad Pro, I, I, I get, I still, it's a, it's a year and a half old. I still get 10 hours of battery life out of it with the screen on full bright while I'm on the Wi-Fi's or on the LTE um, and I, I, doing like photo editing and everything else. So it's got the power. It's got the resources. It's not going to drain it too much. And whatever they announce this week will only enhance that. Meanwhile, on the Windows side, uh, Samsung and Dell and uh, uh, HP are already coming out with tablets that are capable of doing it on their own. They don't need Adobe's help for it. Here's my prediction in the next three years, and I, I strongly have a feeling that this is going to happen. Within two to three years, Apple's going to announce no more on on laptop or on PC storage. All storage is going to be cloud-based, so no more hard drives whatsoever. Uh, what was the time frame? Push, quick, um, what was, two what was the time years. frame that you you predicting this? I think two to three years. It's going to be a mandatory all new PowerBooks and all new iMacs and uh, pretty much everything that has a hard drive is going to be gone. It's going to go to a cloud storage only system, which is going to push everybody else to do something similar. And the only holdout, the only holdout you're going to see is probably either Dell or HP. And then within five years, you're going to see laptops uh, completely go away. And the only desktops you're going to see around are specifically going to be um, power gamers user. only. Yeah. Power users or gamers. Outside of that, if you're not streaming, if you're not gaming, you're not going to have a you're not going to have a keyboard at all. You're going to end up going to tablet only within ten years. Hmm. And this so, is like this is exactly the push you're seeing with Premiere lightening their load up or lightening their resources use up. This is what you're seeing with all these, dare I say it, they're all going to the gym and they're all shedding weight right now. Yeah, I, you know, I, with how fast storage prices are are dropping, though, like like for um, for hard drives, like I I don't see them in the next two to three years, getting rid of hard drives completely. Um, I, I, I think seven to eight years. I might Here's be on the, board with this two to three seems aggressive. Here's the only reason I think that's going to happen is because soon they're going to have to make their big jump. Apple has not made a big jump in what? Six years. They it's haven't a made bit, a yeah. big, huge jump forward they've done incremental small little pushes it they depend, had depends on depends on the platform i think because for instance the the uh, imac pro will be a, a very large jump over the mac pro which was way overdue and overpowered but way overpriced so it never really caught on the imac pro is is totally different and i i think that's where so that that was a jump in the last year or whatever um, laptop wise, I don't think they've made a big jump since 2012 when I got my MacBook Pro. Uh, it was the last was the last time they made a big jump there with the Retina screen, the SSD hard drive, um, way better battery life. Like I think that was the last big jump there. Uh, but, but then, but those are those are good geeky jumps. I'm talking good. I'm talking huge societal grab ninety well, percent of the market and one failed swoop. See, and I, okay, so I think you nailed it when you said ninety percent. So, like when they when the big like transfer to like all cloud, right? No local storage. I think it's going to be more in the eighty to ninety percent adoption area because there are going to be people, not just gamers. There's going to be like reg regular people, right? Like non gamers, I guess is what I'm trying to say, that w will want to have local storage because they don't want to have their shit in the cloud. They're you know, whether that's paranoia or just security mindedness or, or, or whatever, right. Or some other reason they're not going to want their stuff out there. They want it only on their device 
you know, whether that's for, um, uh, you know, malicious purposes or, or just privacy concerns or what have you, but that, that market is still going to exist. So I think companies, including Apple, at least for a while are going to still offer like maybe, a you know, may, maybe a less powerful model or something for users that, that want to maintain that at least past your two to three year, uh, conjecture time frame. I think for us to move to a non-storage model, like non-local storage model of any import, as in more than just the operating system on the, or, or only the operating system on the local device, mm. we will need to have 95% coverage um, of, of generation five LTE or whatever the hell it's called. 5G. Yeah. 5G. Genuine 5G with terror. Yeah. We're, we're probably five to six years out from that. Though. Right. But that's, that's no. what you need before you can start doing no. any, any of that stuff. Mm. You are two years from 5G being implemented by Verizon. Uh, then you're going to see AT&T try to jump on well, Ver- and Verizon's- sweep that. And then you're going to see T-Mobile now that they're combining. The, the problem is, see, with no, the network. yeah, two, two years out from LA, New York, Chicago, Dallas having it. Well, Verizon's Seattle, already, already probably, but, Verizon's but already Oxford, in the market. Indiana having it, we're way more than two years out. Right, that. which is why I said 95%, because you're going to have the, the out cases regardless. But once you have like 95% of people with more than a gigabit connection on a mobile device, with decent battery life, then you can reasonably within about two years, about one generation of devices start seeing mm. hard drives essentially disappear, but not until then. And I think we're, I think we're five, five, maybe seven years out from pervasive 5g. You got to remember because 4g used to jump out. What pushed 4g was the release of uh, iCloud storage. Um, iCloud storage pushed, the opening of a uh, 4G market to begin with. So if I, so if Apple pushes a storage list altogether, that will, you'll see one gig plus really get pumped out really quick. Yeah. I think it's just, it, it's the, it's the infrastructure build. Like who's going to pay for it? You know, I mean, if, if Apple's willing to invest in 5G infrastructure across the country, then fuck like that. Everyone will adopt it tomorrow. Uh, but yeah. I, th- I think we're I think we're a little bit further out mm. from from getting all of that in place. Well, if you'd like to know where we're further out from, you can cruise on over to patreon.com slash ritual misery. Uh, if you give a fuck, give a buck and help make this show possible. Help us do fun stuff like going to South by and uh, and 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 having cool T-shirts made and things like that. So patreon.com slash ritual misery. That's, uh, that's where you can go and that's where we'll be. So see you there. I'm going to double down on my challenge. I want people to show up like with a, with a $5 pledge. I mean, come on, kick in five bucks. That's less than a coffee now. Just kick in five bucks. These guys are worth it. Watch their show grow. <laughs> Let's get them out in the open. Hey, maybe we could actually get them to come to your town, have a little fun, goof off, shoot some silly ass videos, and actually like start taking on Night Attack for the King Spot. <laughs> Tired of them being the B team. <laughs> That's ambitious, uh, yeah. but that, but yeah, that would be fun. All of those things would be fun. We we love to go out to um, to different cities and and meet people. And um, South by is always a good time. And um, yeah, we would love to do live shows in your city, wherever that might be. Uh, so yeah, patreon.com slash ritual misery. Uh, give a fuck, give a buck. Amos, a movie draft minute this week. Welcome to your Movie Draft Minute, presented by DiamondClub.tv for the week of October 15th, 2018. I'm your host, Big Voice Jay. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, except for herpes. Somehow it got upgraded to first class. Let's go to the scoreboard. Teams Game Night and Have a Drink are all tied for last place. Team Vaughn Squad's found some Goosebumps fans out there. They've also found fourth place with $17.8 million. Team Movie Party's First Man and Bad Times at the El Royale combined were third place and $28 million. And Across the Chasm is second place. And Team Drunk Kids Gaming with $148 million. And continuing to harness the power of A Star is Born and Night. Jewel for first place with $162.4 million. It's Team Retro Misery. Glad you moved you have minute. All totals are accurate as of October 17, 2018. I got to hand it to you guys. I did not see a Star is Born doing that kind of numbers.
Yeah, dude. Like I, I called it too. I said this is a second week movie. The opening weekend was a little bit disappointing. Second weekend, we pretty much cleaned up. Mm. So I'm not disappointed with that purchase. Um, I don't know, man. Amos, we are in first place for what the third week in a row, fourth week. How, uh, how far into this are we? Uh, about, we, I'd say about three quarters of our first place run. I think we got one more week of first place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, dude, I think we are going to drop into second place probably either next week or the following. Yeah. Uh, quickly followed up by third place, uh, like, I don't know, another week uh, or two after that. We're probably going to linger around fourth, fifth place until. Uh, Wreck It Ralph Two comes out, and then I think we're gonna jump back up to either second or first, and we'll see if if all goes according to plan. We're gonna jump back in the first place, and it's I, kind of a matter of can we hold it. I, I see us in a death spiral. We don't have another movie until halfway through the draft is over, um, and then we have one last movie, but it's not even at the end. It's kind of like the middling at the end, like the beginning of the last part of the se- season. Um. And that's Mortal Engines, and I I don't know how much I expect from that. Hopefully, it'll bring in a hundred million dollars, but I'm not I'm not yeah, not confident. Rock R- breaks the internet needs to be our Incredibles too. Yes, yes, it's it it literally needs to break our internet. That's what it needs to do. It, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, I hope. It oh my does, gosh! But you got to remember, you're talking about a sequel, guys. But it's it's a sequel to a really good movie with a lot of the cast returning, and it's a Pixar movie. So, or not Pixar? Is it? It's, uh, it's uh, no, it's Disney. It's just it's uh, Disney. Straight, like straight Disney, Disney animation. Yeah. So. Yep. Yeah, but come on. I mean, it's pretty much done by the Pixar guys. Uh, yeah. I mean, but, there's probably a lot of talent crossover for sure. It, yeah. It's, it's flying under the under the uh, the Disney banner. Um, so, you guys are movie guys, and you are also '80s kids. So <laughs> I put together something that that also has a uh big voice j voiceover intro can i please have your attention in the last 30 minutes kids done something now you've got a guess he was very excited kids games play with him play with him play with him that is i call this game game. your favorite comedy movies are from the 80s hashtag me too oh (laughs) oh geez so what I'm going to do is I'm going to read a a plot of an 80s comedy movie. It's going to either be the overall plot or just a, a major plot of that movie. I'm going to read it to you in modern day sensibility terms. Oh, and shit. then you are going to tell me which 80s comedy movie I'm describing. So what oh, I'm going to do is I'm going to wow. start with Squid. I'm going to ask you the first question. And then... Whatever your answer is, if Amos disagrees with it, he will have the opportunity to steal. And then we'll move on to the second one where Amos begins, so on and so forth. I would Are just like guys... to say, fuck you, Kent. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Squid. Your first movie synopsis is, two teenage boys create a real-life sex doll with a computer with the intention of having sex with her and impressing the girls at school with their sexual prowess. What movie is that? Well, that was Weird Science. Amos, was it indeed Weird Science? It was. It was. <laughs> All right, very good. So, so the point goes to Squid. So the way we play this is if Squid had gotten that one wrong, but Amos, you challenged and said that, no, it's um, science weirdness, and it happened to be science weirdness, you would steal that point from him. So Amos, this time we go to you first. Your plot synopsis is when a woman he is working for gets amnesia, a man convinces her she is his wife, so she will clean his house, take care of his kids, and have sex with him. Oh, you better not miss it. (laughs) Overboard. (laughs) I agree. Yeah, that that is... Goldie Hawn and Kurt Russell. Is overboard. We're talking about the original 1980s one with Goldie Hawn... Kurt and Russell. Kurt Russell, of course. Yeah. Didn't, they get, right, school, didn't they get married right after that one? They did. I think or, they did. No, I, yes. no, I, don't, I don't think they got married. They got pregnant. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, they had children together. Yeah. 
All right, Squid, your next movie. A college professor gives electric shocks to a male student so he can try to have sex with a female student. He later sexually harasses and stalks a female client and continuously pressures her for sex. That is, until she becomes demon-possessed and horny. What 1980s movie is this? I'm trying to remember who, which one did she get demon possessed? Wasn't Zapped? Zap Zapped was about uh, Scott Bale. Uh, oh God! Yeah, this is Scott one, Bale. One, that, one, one Scott more time. Bale's Give movie me Zapped was such a low key like it, it was probably playing on Cinemax in like 1985, <laughs> and it's one that you didn't sit through all the way. You just caught like half of it. You 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 never sat all the way through those movies. Oh, I did. <laughs> I was that kid. All right, Squid. So your movie once again is a college professor gives electric shocks to a male student so he can try to have sex with a female. Oh student. oh oh oh! Ghostbusters. So you Agree. say Ghostbusters? Do you say, uh, does that sound like a, the plot of Ghostbusters, Amos? Uh, n- no, it sounds like one of the many subplots of Ghostbusters. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, Squid, you do, in fact, get the points for that because I was describing Dr. Bankman's behavior in Ghostbusters. Yep. Amos, on to you. A boy that appears to be older than his 13 years lies to a woman in her 30s. And has sex with her. (laughs) What movie am I describing? I knew what it was until the last sentence. So basically a 13-year-old boy has sex with a 30-plus-year-old woman. Talk it up, man. Talk it up. A boy that appears to be older than his 13 years lies to a woman in her 30s. I'm going to go. Has, I, I I just don't know about the last part, but I have to go with Big. <laughs> yeah, I okay. agree. Squid, what do, you, what do you think? Is he is he right on that one? Oh, yeah, because it's a classic Zoltar, Zoltar show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is. It's starring the Academy Award winning Tom Hanks, but not for that movie. All right, Squid, I just, over to I you. Did, I do remember them actually shagging. I remember her, him getting on the bed and saying, okay, well, I get I get to be on top, and then he gets on the top bunk, and like <laughs> she's supposed to sleep on the bottom. I don't, I, uh, so yeah, okay, all right. Didn't, let's go. didn't it happen on the trampoline or something like that? I, I th- yeah, I think so, or like in the ball pit or something. Yeah. Like that. I don't know, the shimmy shimmy cook a puff. <laughs> <laughs> and played chopsticks on the, uh, the giant piano in Toy Story. All right, Squid, your next movie synopsis or uh, uh, plot point of an 80s movie is a college freshman dons a disguise and rapes his bully's girlfriend. Ah, got it. It's going to be Revenge of the Nerds with a a two-bit fake-ass Darth Vader. (laughs) Amos, do you you agree with that? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Dude, that's my point. That is Revenge of the Nerds. It was Lewis Skolnick mm-hmm. uh, tricking my, his bully's my, girlfriend into thinking that he was, in fact, there. There is a documentary about the making of those movies, especially the first one. If you have not seen it and you're a fan of those movies, go find that. I have no idea what it's called, but I they, know which one you're talking about. It was an amazing movie to make by all accounts down at the University of 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 of, of University of Arizona. Um, yeah, it was <laughs> Arizona University. Uh, that's probably where it started its party phase. Because holy it, shit, it is one does it's right up on the same line of Caddyshack with the uh, background stories, like mm. where the documentaries yeah. better than the movie, and the movie right. isn't even half as crazy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll we'll have to check that out. <clears throat> All right, Amos, on to you. Your next movie. The hero gives his blackout drunk girlfriend to another protagonist to rape so he can have an excuse to break up with her. 
the hero gives his blackout drunk girlfriend to another protagonist to rape so he can have an excuse to break up with her. Any idea what uh, what movie that is? No. I I know it. I I don't. Oh so God. basically a uh, a guy wanted to break up with his girlfriend yeah. to be with another girl. No, I got that part. And in order to do that, the, so they were at a party and his girlfriend is in the other room, passed the fuck out, completely shit smashed drunk, and he tells uh, kind of a nerdy character. He tells him that that hey, uh, my girlfriend's in the in the bedroom in there, uh, passed out, and I guarantee I could violate her in ten different ways, but I'll let you have her. I know it. It was nineteen eighty six, eighty seven. Mm. I'm at a complete loss. Squid, do you do you have uh, do you have any insight here? This is gonna be oh, some stupid I'm, I'm like license to drive it, or something. Yeah, it came out in like eighty five, eighty six. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and call this one. That was, folks, the Howard Howard Hughes class or uh, the, the uh, damn it, what's his name? Not Howard Hughes. No. What's his name? Um, Not Chris Columbus. Uh, Chris. Um, John Hughes. John Hughes, thank you, thank you. John Hughes, I'm like fucking Howard Hughes, Jesus, that was not that guy. No, not the Elon Musk of of eras past. <laughs> um, but yeah, the John Hughes classic, Sixteen Candles. Sixteen Candles, nailed it. Yeah, I think that one was like 1983, 84, something like that. I was like trying that. to think of a John Hughes movie, and I couldn't think of anything oh. besides Breakfast Club, and I was like, ah, uh, so. And then, well, that yeah, th- that plot was used before. It wasn't just then. Oh, it was used in um. That was a plot point in a lot of 80s lot movies. Of- Every John Hughes movie came from another movie. It was just done better. Basically, basically. Well, done right, more, so more we, prescient we for the time. On, we move on to you for your next movie. Which a you? Teenager, what's you. that? Which you? You. You? you. Squid. Squid. Yes. It is Squid's turn. <laughs> Squid. Here is Squid's next movie. A teenager schemes to sexually assault his mother. And get beaten up by his father. Does that sound like a movie that's, you've seen? What is it? That's the one with uh, Patrick Dempsey where he's a gigolo who delivers pizzas with the crazy ass mustache, the the sombrero, and oh fuck. It's not Mr. Wright. It's um damn it, I can't remember the name, but it's with Patrick Dempsey. Uh, where his mom like calls him and he goes over to like some weird hotel and his mom's there and he's like, holy shit. And then his dad comes down. Boop, boop, boop. Okay. Fuck. Do I can't remember, remember the, name? the name, but I gave you the whole movie. <laughs> Amos, any ideas? It, is squid right? Or is it a different movie altogether? I didn't even hear the clue. So. Okay. So one, one more time, a teenager schemes to sexually assault his mother and get beaten up by his father. Any ideas? I mean, does it, I mean, I, I bet both of you guys have seen this movie. I mean, you're, you're 80s Oh, I know kid. I have. No, no, I'm, I'm almost willing to bet that I have not. <laughs> I would bet against you in this one. Oh, uh, no, I friend. know you've seen it. <laughs> A teenager schemes to sexually assault his mother and get beaten up by his father in Back to the Future. Oh. Marty McFly basically tries to, like, fake rape his mom with the intention that his dad would come around the corner, see this happening, pull Marty out of the vehicle, knock him out, thereby being the hero to get his mom and dad together. Uh, Of course, Biff ruins the scheme and actually tries to rape Lorraine, but uh, that's a whole other thing. The whole right. other rating yeah, I know. That's... subplot of the movie. Welcome to the fifties. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> All right. All right. My turn. Uh, these, are, these have gotten progressively harder. You've done better with the order. 
I like this. <laughs> All right, Amos, your next movie. And the final question Uh-oh. in this contest, uh, which, Amos, this gives you the opportunity to tie Squid mm. at three points. A group of high school boys drill a hole in the girls' locker room so they can watch them shower. And one boy sticks his penis through the hole. <laughs> I think oh, I remember my this. first time watching that movie. <laughs> It was, have you seen this movie? It's it's funny that you complimented me on making these harder. I basically just spelled this one right the fuck out. Oh, dude. <laughs> oh man. Um. I, I know what movie you're talking about, and I know that I have not seen it. Oh, oh no! Because no. we talked about this for hours on end when we were comparing it with that one we saw with Tom Cruise about going down to Mexico, dude. All right, Amos, are you passing on this one? Yeah, pass. All right, Squid for the chance oh, to dude. steal in the win, dude. That is Porky's. That is classic Porky's. <laughs> Never seen it. 100 Porky's. Never seen uh, it. That is like straight up. I tried to be clever with all of the all of the uh, the wordings on these, except for that one. That is straight, straight up <laughs> description of the scene. Nope, never seen and the it. Best, and the best part of that scene is when the coach like reaches down to t- turn it and twist it and yeah, pulls it on his it dick and... through the hole. Yeah, and she wanted to identify it because he had a a, a wart on his dick or something like that or a freckle. <laughs> So she mm-hmm. made all of the boys <laughs> drop their pants so that she can identify his dick. I uh, the only one that was even coming to mind was with the Invisible Boy or whatever the Disney movie, where <laughs> they, they they're talking about what he should do now that he can be, be invisible. And he, he, she's in the one one kid's like, "I'm not gonna sneak into the girl's shower," and the other kid's like, "Are you kidding? I've been beaten off in the shower so much I get a hard on when it rains." <laughs> and I was I always like, that movie, but I can't. I was always what... like, I can't believe this is a Disney movie. Even as a teenager, I was like, what are they doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like the Invisible Boy or some crap like that. Something stupid. The only mem- memorable part of that movie was that line. Right, right. Yeah, I, I remember that line clearly. But I, yeah. Um, right, anyway, well, so that's our game, uh, Squid. You have won four every points. Every school in Alabama. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that was that was fun. That that game, it took me a while to put it together, but it was a lot of fun to put together. It was a, it's actually one of the one of my favorite games that I've I've made so far. Was, I'm gonna have to copy good. this one. Yeah, that was pretty. That good. was a good one. All right, we, like got, one we got one more thing to talk about uh, before we get out of here tonight. Cause this is actually already a long show. Um, <laughs> Squid Kent, maybe you have some insight on this that uh, maybe. Can, uh, Squid put it, posed the question in here, so I'm, I'm not even gonna let him ask because that would just be a good host of me. Um, <laughs> he wants to know if you should get a new PS4 Pro or some VR or a new Xbox, whatever, or build a $500 cheapy for watching internet content. Where's your right, money so, at right there? If you got 500 right, so, bucks, what you doing? But so, you see, that's, so, my, that thing right there is dying. My so my question to you, Squid, is. Is this only for watching streaming content? Like, not for gaming, not for any other purpose, just watching, like, Netflix and Hulu and Amazon Prime? Some like gaming. Uh, I don't console game as much. Uh, it's just not as much fun. It's the Communities kind of suck. Uh, now that they put, like, so many blocks, like, it's, what, $50, $60 a year for PSN, to play online and i think what's xbox uh, i think another Same. 60 dollars yep yeah it's something like that yeah um so not not much for gaming as long as it can stream content that's all you care about that's the major thing that's what i mostly use that for now it used to be for like uh playing um forza not forza um gran turismo and uh well, ssx and stuff like that so my my suggestion then would do, would be to purchase a three hundred dollar television like a like a like a thirty eight or what is it forty two inch I think uh, TV for like three hundred bucks and get a Fire Stick 
or uh, a, a Roku stick. You're under your five hundred dollar cap, and you're gonna have a a positive uh, cord cutting viewing experience. Which I was right there. I was really, really right there. Only thing is, like any like on TV apps that they have are Wi-Fi killers. Like they suck up all the bandwidth. I don't know why. Why you know you could do the same streaming on a PC, doesn't suck up all your bandwidth, but you watch it on TV. It like drags. Interesting. So I I use Apple TV. I know you're you're a big fuck Apple guy. <laughs> I use Apple TV, and I have not noticed any degradation in my streaming. So like I can have uh, someone in the living room watching Apple TV, like Netflix on Apple TV, uh, while somebody's on a PC in another room watching uh, uh, Amazon Prime or something like that. And I don't have any degradation on my computer. Uh, so I don't know if that's maybe that's a uh, like a fire stick thing or, or something, but but I've never had that issue with Apple. Uh, TV. I would suggest you get a ninety nine dollar Roku Ultra with a with an Ethernet port and go wired. I have an Apple TV. I don't have the four K version, but I do have an Apple TV. I do have it wired because I believe in wiring everything that I possibly freaking can. Um, <coughs> yes, and I've never had any problems. But for ninety nine bucks, you get a Roku Ultra. Plug it into the Ethernet port and stream all that you want all yep. day long, or Absolutely. or get Apple TV the 32 gig version because you don't need the 64 because it's kind of pointless to have the 64. Um, get the 32 gig version of the Apple TV. I know you hate Apple, but at least it's the least Apple thing you can get, and <laughs> you you get that thing. Um, and uh, that's what 149 or whatever, and it's got it's a, a little bit more capability. Then the Roku, um, uh, it's a little bit more closed off, but you still get all the same functions that you normally would, and you wire that damn thing in and call it a day. Yep. That's wiring what, wiring it in is the key. That's if, you, the, if you are not playing games, screw all that and just get get the get the streaming box. That's what I would recommend. That's what and if you just want to play like a random game here and there, if you get the Apple TV, you can actually download games I mean, that you can play with your Apple TV remote on your television. Or you can buy like, a, you know, a third party remote and do it. That, yeah, there you go. Yep. So you can, there you go. That's that's my yeah. I'm I'm solid with Amos on this one. Yeah. Or get an <laughs> Nvidia Shield and you get all the streaming and you get Steam. Yeah, Ooh, you I could be the third that. person on earth that actually still uses hey, Nvidia there's Shield. Like, there's like five. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you could be number six. If ever there's I'll an over, six. yeah. If, there, if ever there was an overpowered um, streaming box, it's the Nvidia Shield. <laughs> right. So, um, but even even the Nvidia Shield, what is it like, two hundred bucks or something like that? Probably. Yeah, it probably is. Like it's. I don't know. It's to me, it's way not worth it. Um. Let's go. What What, what do you think, Squid? Did, did, what What do you think of our suggestions? Ah. Oh. Uh, God, buying anything Apple is like mm, stab in the heart. Stab in the heart. Nvidia Shield is $179 ship. Oh, wow. I didn't realize it was that low. Uh, it's still one of the more expensive options. But I think, so it, if you are solidly anti Apple, I, I would say a Fire Stick or probably go with like the Roku Ultra, like Amos said. Mm -hmm. The key, though, is wire it. Uh, throw, throw a cat five or cat six into that bitch and wire it directly to your modem. Uh, that way you're not touching your, your Wi-Fi bandwidth and yep. you should be pretty solid. As long as you've got like a, you know, a decent uh, down uh, bandwidth, yep. like a, you know, a hundred, hundred down, a hundred uh, gigabit down, or I'm sorry, a hundred megabit down or, or sorry, right. gigabit. Jesus. What the fuck decade Thing, are we in? Things and stuff. Uh, but if you get like a hundred down, or somewhere in that neighborhood, or, or better than like wiring it, you're not gonna hurt your your Wi-Fi bandwidth in any way whatsoever. Okay, and that was my concern. That and um, now that everybody Disney's like moving their streaming to solo streaming, Fox is trying to get Fox Now to, off the ground so they can get away from Hulu. Hulu's like becoming just hulu only and everybody's coming out with some form of a streaming channel everything's going to start costing 30 bucks a month and or 10 bucks a month yeah yeah exactly <laughs> yeah it's it's going to be interesting how all all of that like the the services shake out but i think the the hardware 
um, uh, availability. Like there's there's gonna be like four big players, like there are right now, and um, it's just gonna be a matter matter of uh, which which uh, ecosystem you're the most comfortable in. And me uh, being so solidly inside of the Apple ecosystem, Apple TV just made sense to me. Um, I like a lot of the features, and- like the you know the uh, stuff that I don't I'm not even using yet. Like I don't yet own a 4K TV, but I'd like yeah. that my uh, Apple 4K or Apple TV 4K is get- anyway. Whatever. I'm getting in the weeds uh, with that. Uh, but, also, um, don't don't forget that no matter what streaming box you get, if you get a streaming box, you can plug Plex into it, and it opens a whole new world. Especially if you already have a library or know somebody who has an extensive library. Yeah, and that's Plex a, is one of those things that a, you're going to need storage. That's guys looking at. That's another thing I was looking at is when those dev boxes, or what is it, DIV boxes, where um. Oh God! It starts with a K. They're straight out of Ch- uh, Jap- Japan or China. Mm. Um, yeah, those guys. Yeah. Yeah, where you can just all you do is put it in a website and you download everything from that country uh, that's been airing <laughs> and stuff like that. Yeah. That sounds so, like uh, in that gray area of legality. Like it's yeah. not, uh, it's not black market. It's not, um, you know, free market. It's like gray market type stuff yeah. where it's well not necessarily legal, legal, but it's not necessarily illegal. prosecutable either. Yeah. So, <laughs> all right. Um, um, so if, if you have suggestions for Sean, uh, where can people send those suggestions at, dude? Uh, right now, I'm I'm at at I am Squidicus on Twitter. Um, that's pretty much it for, for that. Yeah. Get a hold of you guys. You guys will get me the information and I'll look at it and go, okay, cool. Right now, the biggest thing is I'm just kind of everybody. I try to get on board with this, uh, podcast idea I got kind of filters out because, Oh, I'm moving away and I don't have time. Yeah, whatever. So I'm looking for someone who's a little ambitious. That's really deep into music. Like I am. Who's uh, not willing to? Who's not afraid to spend a uh, couple of hours a week to come up with some weird ideas and put a playlist together on the strangest uh, topics? There you go. If you're into music, man, let them know. I am Squidicus on Twitter. Hell yeah, man! If you want to shoot me a message, I am all about the Twitter at rm underscore del noche. I'm in a bunch of other places too. If you want to find me on any. Uh, social media platform just search del noche or del noche 77 you're you're bound to find me there what about you amos uh you can find me on twitter that's my favorite platform it's where i do all my best jokes definitely not on this show (laughs) uh you can find me at ethan kane e-t-h-a-n-c-a-i-n-e you can find this show at ritual misery on the old twitter and then, of course, you can um, submit ideas or subreddit, ritualmisery.reddit.com. We are live almost every Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern time, or 7 p.m. Pacific time <laughs> on twitch.tv slash ritualmisery. And, of course, we want to thank Mr. Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use his music because his music is everywhere and we love playing it. So, um, mostly, thank you for listening. For Kent, for Sean, for me, and for you, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. See ya. Enjoyed this broker. <laughs> R-A-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-E-L-Y